Hey everybody, it's a beautiful sunny day. I'm finally working with the courage to get some work done outside. And so I thought I'd show you what I'm gonna do with these nails. Now these are four nails that I salvaged from the uh, plank of a pallet that I turned into a, a group of miniature pallets. And I wanted to show this as a way of um, making minis from scrap materials, which is how I source most of the uh, materials for my projects. So something like this that would be garbage. Or if you were really, if you're really frugal, you might save the nail to use as a nail in the future, but it's not very good. It's rusty, it's all bent up, you're better off just throwing it out. So here's how we can divert a little bit of waste from the waste stream and turn it into, I guess, an even smaller piece of metal. So the first step in making these is to forge the nails into the blades. Now what I'm doing right now is a process called cold forging. I used to heat the nails in a mini forge that I had built to red hot and forge them like you would forge a normal knife. But I realized that because the metal is so small, that step is actually not necessary. And this process also uh, has an added benefit in that it hardens the steel quite a bit. So you can see here, the blanks of the knives are shaped nicely. Now this is becoming a familiar process, grinding the profile of the blade. Once again, working my way down through my files, through my diamond files, all the way down to this 3000 grit paper. And now I'm just profiling the edge of the blade, adding a, a little bit of sharpness to it. So you can see here that I'm drilling the holes with um, my pin drill. Now this is a really fun tool. It works, uh, works really well actually for how small it is for drilling these really small precise holes. So now we're moving on to making the next piece. And I did find it necessary to heat the metal for this part because I was trying to expand the base of it and be a little bit more precise with what I did expand and what I didn't expand. And once again, using the pin drill, and I think it's a 0.8 millimeter drill bit, which uh, basically just snaps instantly if I try to use it in my electric drill. So now I'm filing the tip of the screwdriver to make a Phillips head. So cutting four grooves to create a cross shape out of the metal. And this next piece here I'm making out of mild steel, this is going to be a saw blade. And there we go, the three pieces for this Swiss army knife, all roughed in. Now I'm using my files once again to round out the shaft of this tiny little Phillips head screwdriver. Here I am hardening the saw blade. Because this is made of mild steel, it's originally quite soft. So it's necessary to heat it up to, um, to an orange hot temperature and then quench it immediately. And that has the effect of hardening the steel. So now we can see all three of the uh, tools are pretty much done and I'm just threading them onto this thin copper tubing, figuring out the best way for them to sit in, in the knife. And you can see this thicker tubing in the back I'm going to use to create spacers that also slip on. 
Now this is an example of another piece of salvage material. This is an old first aid kit that uh, I had sitting in my studio from the 70s, so nothing in it was necessarily um, of high enough quality to use for actually doing first aid. But the plastic is perfectly fine, and instead of sending it to a landfill, let's use it to make something. So this part is essentially a lot of tinkering. I think I I reduced this from about four hours to two or three minutes so that it would be consumable, but in the studio this was a, a long, long time of trial and error until I figured out exactly how this whole thing was going to fit together. So you can see me here widening out the ends of the copper tube to create rivets that are holding this, uh, this whole thing together. And using my little jeweler's hammer to peen the ed edges of the rivet over so that it uh, is very secure. And there we have it. Now all that's left is to profile the case. Now ideally I would have shaped this case before I put the blades in, but because of the way that it's all attached, um, I found it easier just to seal the whole object together and shape the case after. Uh, otherwise, I would have had to put the whole thing together, shape the case, take it back apart, and then put it back together, and I'm not sure that the plastic would have survived that process. <laughs> and you can see here my sheets of sandpaper piling up to get it all to this nice glossy finish. So you can see all of the tools fold up. Technically there are four tools in this. And it's got a very simple, sleek design. So the four tools, the screwdriver, knife, the saw, and a hook for holding it onto a necklace. Now, as you may know, something that I value highly in making my miniatures is their ability to function. That's something that's absolutely necessary. And I wanted this to actually be a real tool. Something that uh, if, you were, if you were in a pinch and you were wearing it as a necklace, you could actually use it to maybe fix your glasses or uh, cut open a package or maybe saw a very tiny piece of wood. So here is my quality assurance test. First we'll test the saw. It works. Next, the knife. Yep. It's a little bit hard to get leverage on it, but uh, it's working great. Finally, the screwdriver. Once again, it's so tiny that it's uh, it's hard to hold on to, but once I got the hang of it, it worked like a charm. Which I guess is an appropriate saying here because it is kind of a charm.
Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you liked it. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel and telling your friends and family. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great day and thank you so much for being here. Bye.